Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on Should I Use QuickBooks Online for My Business? I'm Bob Hogan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County, and I'm going to be your host today. Our presenter today is Karen Schwartz. More on Karen in just a minute, but first, a few brief comments on SCORE. Uh, SCORE is a national organization. We have um, over 320 chapters across the country and 11,000 volunteers. We are part of the SBA of the federal government and locally here in SCORE Fairfield County, we have over 140 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value added services to small business owners. First of all, we offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling, which can be by face-to-face, -face, telephone or email. And if you would like a mentor, you can click on that link on the screen or you can also go to our website at fairfieldcounty.score.org. We also offer a wide range of educational workshops and webinars, actually about 150 during the year, and you can access those from our website as well. And we um, have a wide range of extensive tools on our website as well, including you can access subject matter experts there. Um, our next webinar will be two weeks from today, on Tuesday, March the 3rd at 12 noon, and the topic is Show Me the Money, How to Achieve a Profitable Business Sale with Irene Comer presenting. And you can, again, find the specifics on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. Uh, we have set aside time for uh, questions at the end of the um, webinar today. So if you have a question, please use the chat feature at any time during the presentation, and you can find that there's a chat button at the bottom of your screen. And we will make sure that we either get to it during the presentation, as Karen has agreed to do that, or we will take them at the end. Uh, however, we will finish sharply at one o'clock to respect your time. The session is being recorded and access to the recording along with the materials that Karen will be using will be available within about the next 24 to 48 hours. And you can go to our website and uh, click on on-demand webinars to get the recording. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker. Uh, Karen Schwartz is the founder and principal of Time and Sense Consultants, as well as an associate of 3545 Consulting. She helps legal and other professionals select, install, and get the most out of their practice management, billing, accounting, and other specific uh, technologies. Karen is an advanced certified pro advisor on QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online, as well as a certified consultant on a number of billing, accounting, and practice management solutions. It's now my pleasure to turn it over to Karen. Karen, it's all yours. Thank you very much. Um, and welcome everybody, I'm delighted to be here. So we're gonna talk about is QuickBooks Online correct, the right choice for your business? Um, there we go. So um, I am, as Bob mentioned, I am the founder of Time and Sense Consultants and an associate of 3545 Consulting. I specialize in working with law firms um, and I am certified on a number of solutions primarily oriented towards law firms, but I also work with QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online and integrating it in with those solutions that do not have their own accounting um, solution. So the odds against small businesses are pretty high. 20% fa fail in the first year and 50% fail in the first five years. If you work with an accounting professional and follow their advice, the odds of success go up. And the main reason for that is that you are getting timely information. But in order to have timely information, you have to have some way of gathering it. If you're putting all your information into a shoebox, you are not going to have the ability to look at how your business is doing. Cash is one of the key components for businesses. And knowing what your cash, cash position is can help you in making good decisions. So working with an accounting professional is important, but it's even more important to have the information that the accounting professional needs in order to give you good advice quickly and easily accessible. And that is what QuickBooks does. There are two basic programs of QuickBooks. There is QuickBooks Desktop and there is QuickBooks Online. They are somewhat different and it is important to know that and to look at them and to understand what features are important to your business. 
there are a number of ways you can do that. There are resources out on the uh, internet in terms of the QuickBooks website that help you understand the differences. People like myself and other certified consultants who can be found from the QuickBooks website, from the Find a Pro Advisor, can help in understanding. But basically, you need to know your business and think about what your needs are. If you do inventory, if you do assembly, that's going to impact what program is right for you. If you think that desktop is the better solution for you than QuickBooks Online, it doesn't mean you are tied to working in your office. There are hosted desktop solutions where your QuickBooks desktop is available in the cloud and it is available anywhere, anytime, just like when you try to use QuickBooks Online, you're just paying for a hosting solution in addition to your QuickBooks uh, software. You can switch from one to the other, but it is not something you're going to want to do on a regular basis. So you want to make the decision and stick to it because switching is not perfect. Um, and once you do an upload from QuickBooks Desktop to online or a download from QuickBooks Online to desktop, you do need to verify the data. And sometimes there are things that are not correct and you're going to have to deal with those. If you do want to convert from QuickBooks Desktop to online or the other way around, QuickBooks technical support can help you, but you can also use the Find a Pro Advisor to find someone like myself who can help with that and also help you decide if it is the right decision. So now we're going to talk about QuickBooks Online, um, which is the focus for today. And we're going to talk about the benefits and also which subscription level of QuickBooks Online might be best for you because there are multiple different levels. So what are the first benefits of QuickBooks Online? Well, it's cloud-based. That means you don't have to maintain a network or any specific equipment. You just need a computer and anywhere you want to get to it, you can, as long as you have internet access. There are also mobile and desktop apps. So there are things that you can run, on, there are QuickBooks apps that you can run on your iPhone or your Android device and access QuickBooks Online that way, not as full functioned as the QuickBooks Online that you log into, but very extensive and very easy to use. There are also desktop apps for Windows computers and for Mac computers. These are apps that you can install on your computer and use to access your QuickBooks Online instead of logging into the Chrome browser and accessing it that way. It makes access a little bit easier. It is full function and it's a nice way to use QuickBooks. Um, QuickBooks Online is accessible across multiple operating systems and devices, as I just mentioned. Real-time multi-user access from anywhere. Um, the number of users really depends on the version that you have. And it is hosted and secure by Intuit, and it gets updated on a regular basis. So you don't have to worry about installing upgrades and being on the latest version. It's all taken care of for you. There are also some workflow benefits. So there are document management integrations. So you can upload receipts and store them right with your QuickBooks online data and integrate that in. There are also thousands of apps that integrate in with QuickBooks Online that allow you to add features and functionality. So if you want to do your expense reports or have your employees do expense reports and then pull the data from those expense reports into QuickBooks Online and pay the employees and all the other things that you need to do, that can be done with various apps. You can pay, track your accounts payable and communicate with your vendors through apps. Almost anything you wanna do, you can find an app to add to the functionality that may already be in QuickBooks Online. You just go into the App Store and it's available there. If you are in QuickBooks Online, there is an immediate link to the apps as well. You don't have as much data entry because when you enter something in one place, it is entered everywhere. So all the pieces are you know, uh, combined. 
And then with, uh, with QuickBooks Desktop, if you want your accountant to be able to see the data, they either have to come to your office or you have to make an accountant's copy and send it to them. While they have that accountant's copy, there are certain functionality that you cannot do in your database until they return it. And so you have to wait for it to come back to you. With QuickBooks Online, you can invite your accountant and you can actually invite two accountant users into QuickBooks Online. And when they need to look up information, they can do it. If they are running the QuickBooks Online Accountants Edition, which many accountants that work with QuickBooks Online have, they can also communicate with you directly through the program and ask you for additional information and give you a way to update it, upload the information that you need and talk with you that way. So it makes it very easy to work with your account. There are multiple levels of QuickBooks online, which I mentioned earlier. You can go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash pricing and get prices. The prices do change periodically. There are promotions that go on. Um, QuickBooks resellers often have some enhanced promotions that are available that we can offer to you. But the five basic levels of QuickBooks Online are self-employed, simple start, essentials, plus, and advanced. So let's talk a little about the, uh, about the different levels. So these are the prices as of the last time I updated this presentation, which was a few weeks ago. So don't go buy them, but they're probably close to accurate. Self-employed is a fairly basic level. It is really designed for tracking your income and expenses, and it's designed for people who are running a Schedule C, a business that they report on a Schedule C on their taxes. So it's not a necessarily a full-time business. They might have just one checking account for both business and personal. If you are running the QuickBooks for self-employed on your phone, it downloads from your checking account and you swipe one way to indicate that something's a personal expense and the other way to indicate that it is a business expense. So it's designed for fairly simple users. Great for someone who maybe drives for Uber or Lyft or does something on a more part-time basis. Um, it does help with capturing and organizing your receipts and estimating your quarterly taxes, which is very important. You can do invoicing and accept payments, and you can track miles, and it has some basic reports. The next level up is the Simple Start. So we went from the right side of the screen over to the far left. But Simple Start offers some additional abilities, like the ability to do estimates, to manage 1099 contractors, and to track sales and sales tax. The essentials adds even more. With essentials, you can start to manage bills. So you can enter payables and pay them at a later date. With Simple Start, you can write a check, but you can't track that you have a vendor bill that's due a month from now, three weeks from now, whatever. Simple Start and Self-Employed are also single user. Essentials gives you the ability to have three, up to three users plus jumps that to up to five users and also lets you track project profitability and inventory. Now, one very important thing to note, if you are currently using QuickBooks Desktop and you are switching, thinking of switching to QuickBooks Online, is that the two programs track inventory differently. QuickBooks Desktop tracks inventory on an average cost basis. QuickBooks Online tracks inventory on a first in, first out basis. So if you convert from one to the other, there are some IRS implications and your inventory valuation will change. So you definitely want to talk to your accountant before you make that kind of a switch. Advanced is a substantial jump up, but it is really designed for firms that need more than the basics. And it includes a lot of additional benefits. It is up to 25 users. It includes business analytics and insights. 
as well as the ability to do batch invoicing and expenses and security custom with very detailed customized access by role. You do get a dedicated account manager and on-demand online training, as well as a built-in backup solution. Now, many people wonder why I need backup with an online program, because Intuit is doing backup. And if there is a failure in the systems, they get back up and running quickly because they have multiple locations and everything is backed up. However, if you decide, I am going to import in 100 invoices and you mess up your import, you cannot call into it and say, can you put me back to 10 minutes ago? With a backup solution, you have the ability to do a, a controlled backup and then do that recovery when you need it. With QuickBooks Advance, that backup solution is included. With the other versions, there are backup apps that you can purchase for an additional cost. So I've talked kind of about this, but QBO self-employed, Schedule C part-time workers. These are some more details, just to give you some information for when you, uh, if you look at this presentation later. The QBO Simple Start, one user, sales tax, two accountant users. Nope. QBO Essentials seems to have uh, shrunk. I'm not quite sure why, but, um, but it also, in addition to some of the other things I've mentioned, it does have multiple currencies as well as the ability to have recurring transactions. So the recurring transactions allow you to say, I'm going to put this transaction in and I want to be reminded about it once a month, or I want to have it automatically entered onto my books every month. So I have to pay my rent. I have it set up to automatically come out of my bank account every month. I don't want to have to remember to go put that in but it's going to come out of my bank account every month, I can go in and I can set that up as a recurring transaction and it will come in automatically. The other thing that's nice is if you need to do time tracking, QBO Essentials includes unlimited users for time tracking, which is very nice. With QBO Plus, you get everything that was in the prior ones plus, uh, plus these additional features, including the tracking of inventory and inventory bundles. Inventory bundles allow you to say that I sell these three things together. And instead of putting on an invoice that I sold this and this and this, I can say I sold this bundle and all three things will show up automatically. Uh, the prepare and print 1099 miscellaneous is actually a little bit incorrect. Not that you can't do it, but it is now available in all of, in Simple Start and Essentials as well, not only in QBO Plus. QBO Plus also offers us budgets as well as two-sided items. Um, and two-sided items are very helpful when you are tracking inventory because you can set up a single item and have it used for both the purchase and the sale so that your inventory can be tracked appropriately. In the Simple Start and Essentials, we do not have that. An item is either used for, us for income or it is used for expenses. And then Advanced has much better uh, customized access by role, the things I mentioned before, and it also has the ability to set up automated workflows. Uh, so like that we want to be reminded about, you know, inventory, um, accounts receivable at certain points and things like that. So we could set up some automated workflows within the QBO Advance. So for larger firms that have a little bit more complex requirements, it's a great software solution. So which QuickBooks Online do you choose? So for example, a business that sells cosmetics at house parties needs to keep track of income and expenses, but doesn't have inventory and it's one user, and pays all their expenses via credit card, well, they would probably want QBO Simple Start. They don't need the additional features and QBO Simple Start would work well for them. 
But a dental practice that maybe uses third-party billing software and records revenue by a single customer name and pays their bills and checks, but needs access for multiple people and their CPA, Simple Start wouldn't work. They would probably want QBO Essentials. Now you may wonder why they would want to use third-party software and put all their sales in as a single name. And that is because QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online are not HIPAA compliant. And if you don't know what HIPAA is, then you're probably not a doctor. But if you are a doctor, then you know you have to comply with those rules, which means that you cannot put your customer names into a program like QuickBooks because that information is not confidential in the way it needs to be. But if you are using a third party billing software, it will give you all the information about how much you receive for a particular day. And you just put the dollar amount received as customer receipts or patient receipts for the day and do all your other account and do all your, your accounting in QuickBooks Online. A little bit more complex business would be an interior design firm. They have billable expenses and they have inventory and maybe they want to track revenue by designer and they might want to do budgets and track the time. Well, they are going to need QBO Plus. So let's take a little look at some of the functionality within QuickBooks because I find that's very helpful in understanding the software. So first of all, if you want to play around in QuickBooks Online, you can go out to qbo.intuit.com slash redir slash test drive, and you can log in to a QuickBooks Online sample company called Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. When you go out there, you can work in there for as long as you want, um, although you can't leave it running overnight, it will log you out. Um, but you can work in there. When you leave, everything you do will be wiped out. But it's a great place to go in and test things, see how you feel about QuickBooks Online, or even if you are already using QuickBooks Online and you would like to know how something will behave if you do it and you don't want to put it into your real company, you can go out to test drive and play with it. When you sign up for QuickBooks Online, you get a sign-in screen where you can either sign in with Google or you can set up your user ID and password. I personally recommend a user ID and password because it's more secure than sharing your information with Google for your QuickBooks Online accounting. You also can see here that um, because I was on a Windows computer, I also had the ability to download the Windows app that I talked about. There is also a Mac app that you can download and run. When you start a brand new company, you get a setup wizard and you are going to run through the setup. So you put in some basic information, what's your business called, you can put in how long you've been in business. If you are coming in from QuickBooks desktop, you have an option to check that off and it will guide you through importing your data. And then you can choose some additional information and answer some questions. And the program will walk you through trying to help you with getting set up. Anything that is set up that is incorrect can be changed once you get in. And you can also upgrade and downgrade versions of QuickBooks online if you need to from within the system. If you do downgrade, any features that you had that were not compatible will be lost. Uh, if you are using multi-currency, that becomes a, a problem. So that is one area where you definitely don't want to look at downgrading. So, we're in Craig's Design and Landscaping, and we're going to look at some of the basic functionality of the screen. But this is your basic screen that you see when you first get in. Um, and you have your navigation along the, the top. Up in the upper right, you have a bunch of navigation points. And then down the left side, you have additional 
and in the middle, you have your overview information about your company. So you have your bank accounts, um, and it will also show you your credit card accounts in there, and it shows you how up to date they are if you have set up online banking where QuickBooks will go every night and download information from your bank so that you can match the transactions that you have already entered or add new ones. Of course, you definitely need to be careful with what information gets downloaded and how it gets put in because banks do make mistakes and you always want to verify that the transactions that are being downloaded are correct. Um, don't just accept that it is the right thing because it's in there. Always make sure you verify any transactions. So if I click on the gear icon in the upper right corner of the screen, I'm going to see four sections. The profile on the right gives me access to my Intuit account. Also to feedback and some privacy settings. Privacy basically controls a little of what can be seen when you first open up the company. If you might be going in and having somebody looking over your shoulder, whatever, and you don't want them to see certain information. The different sections are the your company, which is your account and settings. That's where you can see your level of QuickBooks and uh, pay for your subscription and things like that. Then your manage users, where you can add new users custom form styles, the chart of accounts, and QuickBooks Labs, which is an area that you can go in and see some things that Intuit is testing in terms of QuickBooks Online, but the features may not stay around permanently. Then we have our lists, which gives us access to our different types of lists and our attachments, and our tools area where we can import data, export data, do our bank reconciliations, um, our budgeting, if we have that feature in the level we're on, and other areas as well. We also have up at the top our search, and we can search for various transactions. We can search by transaction number, by month, day, and year, by dollar amount. I find that really in order to get the transactions I really want that I don't usually use the search transactions. I usually click on advanced search. Advanced search lets me set up a much more detailed search that is customized for what fields I want to search for and um, what information I want to find. And I find that does a better job of giving me the information I want. So you can put it in the search, but if you don't find what you're looking for, I strongly suggest going to advanced search and you're more likely to find it. On the left, we have our dashboard and the plus button at the top is used to add all kinds of new transactions. So if you want to add anything, this is your main place to go. You go to, you can see your information that would be tied to transactions that are tied to customers, transactions that are tied to vendors, your transactions that are tied to employees, and other things like bank deposit or transfer or journal entries. Now, the payroll is an added feature. It is not included in QuickBooks Online unless you subscribe to one of the QuickBooks Online payroll services. One of the areas I really like is the banking. And in the banking area, this is where you see all of the uh, bank accounts and credit card accounts that you have set up and where you can link them for downloading. If you click on the little pencil, in the account that you are active, you can um, you will get a thing to link to QuickBook your QuickBooks online account to your online banking. You just generally need to go in, put in your online banking credentials, and give it per, which gives it permission to go access, and then it will go out and connect. Some banks do have some additional security where you have to do something in your online banking portal, um, but it will usually tell you if there's a problem. 
if you, uh, when you are looking at these tiles, they show you what the bank balance is, what the balance is in QuickBooks. And the number is the number of transactions that have been downloaded, but not yet matched or, or added into QuickBooks Online. So it gives you all the information. And then in the lower part of the screen, you can see all the transactions and you can make your decisions as whether they match something or they need to be added. Or if maybe you downloaded a transaction after you already reconciled your bank account, you might want to just ignore the transaction. Because once a transaction has been reconciled, it can't be matched to QuickBooks Online downloads but you do have the ability to add, match, or ignore. If you feel that something has not been updated, you can click on the update button in the upper right. One other thing to note is that your bank balance and your in QuickBooks balance are not gonna usually be exactly the same on your bank accounts. If you are manually entering transactions or if you're writing your checks and things like that, because your bank doesn't know about checks that you have written that have not cleared yet. Or maybe you entered a deposit because you're gonna go to the bank tomorrow. That's not gonna be in the bank balance, but it would be in QuickBooks. So. If the numbers are a little bit off, as long as you know why they're off, it's okay. Under sales, we get the ability to look at our different kinds of sales transactions. So we have our overview, we have all sales, we have invoices, we have customers, and we have products and services. If we go into our customer center, we can see all of our customers, and we can get an overview of what's going on with our customers. The tiles along the top are filters, as well as being information. So they tell us that I have 10 invoices that are overdue and 20 that are opened. And if I click on any of those links, or any of those tiles, I should say, it will pull up the transactions that are related to that particular tile. I also have a list down below of all of my customers. I can search for a particular customer. I can edit the customer, or I can do various transactions tied to that customer. You notice over on the far right, we have receive payment with a little drop down next to it. And if I click on that drop down, I would have the ability to do other things like create an invoice for that customer. So if I come into the customer center, I can do something directly for the customer without creating, without choosing the customer. If I start from the invoices tab, I would have to specify the customer when I say create a new one. I also have my new customer in the upper right, and I can set up customer types and assign those to my customers to run reports in various ways. I also have a little printer icon right above my action, word action on the bottom on the right hand side, the ability to export, and my little gear icon, which lets me change the columns that I am seeing on the screen if I want. When I open up a particular customer, I have the ability to see their basic information and to edit it. I can add a new transaction specifically for that customer, or I can look at all of the transactions for the customer, the projects related, um, the details or late fees, if there might be one. And you'll notice you can also add notes. When I go in and look at the customer information, this is the uh, type of information that I am gonna see. The main tab is my address information. And I can set up my billing address and my shipping address. If you are calculating sales tax within QuickBooks Online, it is important to make sure that you have shipping addresses because the shipping address is what's used for calculating sales tax. You can also fill in notes, tax information, and other information as you wish. If we go into our expenses side, we have something very similar to sales, except a little bit fewer choices because we only have expenses and vendors. 
we will, if we do that, we will also get a vendor center that looks very much like the sales center that we saw earlier, but has all of the vendor related tabs and selections. And the vendors, when you go in to edit a vendor, will look very much like a customer. One thing I should have mentioned is when you are putting in a new company or a vendor, when you start filling in that very top section where it says company, QuickBooks Online will try to look through a huge database of companies and find the actual company name for you. If it does, it will and you it'll give you a list and you can choose the one you want and it will put there, it will populate the address information for you automatically. If you don't see the one you want, just tab down it, just click down into the billing address area and fill it in directly. There is some additional functionality that's kind of nice in QuickBooks. Um, I mentioned earlier QuickBooks Labs. This is a trial area that QuickBooks Labs is experimenting with things that they might introduce. If you go out there and you see something you like, you can try it, no charge. If you like it, please give them feedback. If there are things you think could be improved in them, give them feedback on that too, and they make it very easy to give them the feedback. The only thing is don't fall too much in love with it because it may not stay. So, but if you give feedback and lots of people give feedback that it's a good feature and functionality, it's pretty likely to get incorporated into the program. QuickBooks Online runs best in Chrome. So that's the browser that you should use. Um, you can set up tabs in Chrome to get to various areas of the program. You can set up bookmarks. And if you were not aware of this, you can right click on a tab that you have open in Chrome and you can choose duplicate. So you can actually have multiple QuickBooks online windows opened at the same time. In the QuickBooks desktop app, you can also open up multiple tabs. And I talked about the desktop app for Windows and Mac previously. I mentioned that there are lots of third party apps that can help you do things. And those are also available throughout the program. And then the QBO on mobile devices, um, iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. There are mobile apps for both. Check the Apple Store or the uh, Google Play Store to find them. So to find the apps for that you might like, this is where you can go. You can also, when you are in QuickBooks Online, you will see in that left-hand panel something that says apps. But if you want to just go out and look around without having QBO, this is the link to go find them. You can search by category. You can search by keyword. You can search by job. Uh, you can search by the type of business you're running. So you just put in the words you want, and it will find it. They do show popular apps, trending apps, and free apps. Most apps do have a two to two week to a month free trial, but it does vary by app. So just read the terms of it, um, and you know, explore. The apps are wonderful tools. There are a number of them that I use on a regular basis that I find are very that helpful. Um, I use one for uh, backup. I use one for um, for paying of my uh, third party vendors, my 1099 contractors, which makes it really easy. And I find them wonderful tools. So the QuickBooks Online for Mac and Windows, this is the app that I talked about for the desktop. You don't have to re-enter your password every time. It does keep you signed in for an extended period. Uh, one click and you are in. There is also training available. You can go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash learn hyphen support and find lots of training materials from Intuit. You can also go out to YouTube and there are a number of different, um, or just do a Bing or a 
Google search and find a number of QuickBooks training resources. The quality of those will vary, whereas the stuff from intuit.com is very good. But there are a number of really good authors who have material that they have put out on QuickBooks, uh, related to QuickBooks Online, that you can find for free or some people that offer training um, materials that are for sale. Um, and I'm happy to try to answer questions about the ones that I know about, but there are a lot of them, some I am familiar with and some I'm not. There is also a QuickBooks Online accountant, if there are any accounts that are taking a break from tax preparation uh, today. And that has some additional features that are available. Um, it provides central access to the client's QuickBook, to your QuickBooks, your client's QuickBooks online company files. And it gives you some additional features for managing your practice and communicating with your clients. There are some special accountant only tools um, and it is free for accountants. If you are considering QuickBooks Online Accountant, this is the link to it. And you can set that up and then you can invite your staff as team users and give them permission to specific QBO companies. So that gives them the ability to work and do what they need to do. Um, also, if you are using QuickBooks Online Accountants Edition, and you want to take responsibility for your client's QuickBooks Online subscriptions and manage them, you can create wholesale billing for your clients, for your firm, and you can bill your clients for their subscriptions and manage it as part of the services you are doing for your clients, where you are maybe doing their taxes as well as managing their QuickBooks Online account and doing their bookkeeping as well. Uh, to log into QBO A, once you're logged in, you'll see different options and you can switch around to the to your own company and then go into your to your clients' companies. So that takes me to the end of my formal presentation, but I would love to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thanks, thanks, Karen. Um, we, we do, do have, have um, ample, ample time, time for questions. So just, just as a reminder, reminder if you have questions, um, please um, type them in via the chat feature, and uh, we will we will get to them. And while while you're doing that, I'll start with a couple that have already um, come in, Karen. And uh, the, the the first one is from uh, Melissa, and it says I currently use desktop and have issues with two-factor authentication and sending emails. Is there a problem with this online? So that is going to depend on what kind of email account you're using and the setup of your email account. Um, so it's kind of hard to answer because each email account is different. If you are using a um, an exchange account versus using, say, a Gmail account or something else, it's very it's your um the issues are going to vary so i can't guarantee that it will work more smoothly in quickbooks online because it does depend on the type of um email account you are using for your link uh, there's another question from uh, melissa she also uses customer jobs to create files for her clients monthly invoices for example january 2020 under mr smith and it makes it very easy to track invoices and um, how would she do this using the online version because she's had issues in the past when she's used um, qbo so she's having a problem with creating invoices so in quickbooks online it's very easy to go into a customer and create an invoice um i'm not sure why you're having a problem with creating because you should be able to create them pretty easily in desktop as well it's going to in part depend on what version of quickbooks online you are working with and how you have set things up if you have gone in and customized your settings and customized your um 
your item list correctly, then your in then creating an invoice should be pretty straightforward. Um, so you might want to reach out to either a QuickBooks Pro advisor or to QuickBooks support to see if they can help you figure out why you are having a problem. Uh, just, just a, a clarification. clarification. Um, she's uh, apparently having a problem creating subfolders under a client's name. Subfolders under a client's name. Oh, so jobs under, okay. So you're trying to create jobs. So in QuickBooks Online and in QuickBooks Desktop, you can create jobs. In QuickBooks Desktop, they are called customers and then create called jobs. In QuickBooks Online, they are called sub-customers. And when you are in a customer record in QuickBooks Online, you can choose right above where you put in the shipping address, there was an option to make it a sub-customer of another customer. And that will make it a customer, uh, a sub-customer. And then you can choose the individual customer, sub-customer to create your invoice for. And you do create the invoices for the individual customers, but in QuickBooks Online, you do have the ability to say, bill with. Whereas in QuickBooks Desktop, it is pretty much an individual uh, billing. I think that uh, likely uh, will cover it. Um, again, if you have a question, um, please uh, put it in the uh, the chat feature. And uh, maybe while we're waiting, Karen, other than the um, the problem with the change in inventory method, are there any other things to watch out for when you go from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online? Yeah. Um, one of the one of the other things is just in terms of reports. The reporting in there, there are some reports that are available in QuickBooks Desktop that at this time are not available in QuickBooks Online. Uh, so you want to just make sure that all of the reports that you are used to using do exist in QuickBooks Online before you do a transition. Um, the other thing you want to make sure you want to look at is the size of your data file. If you have too big a file in QuickBooks Desktop, you have to have some work done on it to condense it before you can switch to QuickBooks Online. Or you might want to just export your chart of accounts and some of your customers and vendors um, in order to put them into QuickBooks uh, Online and start fresh there. One thing to note that is that I did not mention when I was talking about the different versions of QuickBooks Online is there are limits on the number of chart of accounts and classes and um, list items that you can have in the various versions of QuickBooks Online. Now, inactive do not count. And in terms of the chart of accounts, there are certain accounts that QuickBooks Online creates automatically, and those don't count towards your number. But if you get up above the number, you either have to make things inactive or go to the next level of QuickBooks. And if you have a lot of customers or vendors or a very long chart of accounts, you may need to look at QuickBooks Online Advanced because of the capacities that it offers. Uh, we have another uh, question, which I think is, is straightforward, but uh, hopefully you know the answer. It says, uh, does QuickBooks just come in English or can you get a Spanish version? In this country, it is only English. They do sell QuickBooks in other countries and there are uh, probably some Spanish versions of that in there. Um, I do know a couple of consultants who specialize in Spanish, uh, in working with people who are Spanish or whose primary language is Spanish, and they may be able to help you more specifically. Um, if you would like to reach out to me at my email address, I would be happy to uh, put you in touch with one of the Spanish speaking people that I know. That's great. great. Um, we don't, we don't have, have any other uh, questions right, right now, but we still do have time. Um, Karen, I know, I know you, you covered, covered a number of things pretty quickly. Is there anything that you would uh, like, like to go back to if we have a couple of minutes? Or... I mean, there's, there's so, so much. much. 
Um, and I didn't want to get go directly into the program. I think one of the great things with QuickBooks Online is the reporting. It does have a lot of reports. And when you go into QuickBooks Online and you go into the reporting, you have the ability to customize reports. So you can go in and customize. And then when you customize a report, you do have the ability to save it. And then you can look at your custom reports. So if there is a report that you spend time customizing because you want to use it over and over again, it's very easy to do that and save it. There is also in QuickBooks Online, in some of the versions, the ability to have unlimited reporting users. So you can have users who have logins to QuickBooks Online they're not using one of your licenses, like one of your five user licenses if you're using QBO Plus, but they can log into QuickBooks Online and go look at reports. And that's a very nice feature for people using QuickBooks Online. You also can favorite reports. You will see in your reports that there are stars next to the reports. If you click on one so that it is now filled in instead of empty, that favorites it. And then you can see all your favorite reports and very easily get to those reports, which is a very nice way to access reports. Um, and the reports are very powerful and very flexible. I do find that when people are using reports in QuickBooks Online, sometimes they get a little frustrated when customizing because there's two different kinds of accounts. There is accounts and there's distribution accounts. And I'm not going to go into all the details of what the two different types are and what the meaning of them is. But if you go in and you filter for an account and you're getting no results, clear the account filter and try using the distribution account filter and I bet you'll have better luck with your report. That's, That's a great, great uh, clarification. Um, and I think uh, given that we don't have any uh, more questions, we're going to uh, conclude right now. And uh, just as a reminder, uh, this webinar was recorded and the materials will be available in the next 24 to 48 hours on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. Our next webinar will be two weeks from today, March 3rd at noon. The topic is Show Me the Money, How to Achieve a Profitable Business Sale with Irina Comer presenting. And again, um, as you see on the screen, we do offer free individual one-on-one -on -one counseling, which you can access by the link or by clicking the Request a Mentor button on our website. And if you could, um, one last thing, please fill out our evaluations that you'll be sent immediately following the webinar. They uh, greatly help us um, with uh, topics going forward. So on behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank everyone for attending our live webinar today. And a special thank you to Karen Schwartz for presenting. And have a nice day, everyone.